Hey guys, what's up? Dip Tack here. Just want to make a longer form video today, only because, you know, have the energy, can't sleep, might as well, right? So today I wanted to talk about my kit, or my training setup, whatever you want to call it, my get-go, my shit hits the fan, whatever, it could be used for anything. Alrighty guys, before we get into the actual video, this right here is a JPC-1, the first gen or whatever, and uh, I swear I ordered a JPC 2.0, but I guess not, there's no little zippies on the back. So, uh... I have this right here, um, Cry Precision back piece for a JPC 2.0, um, I'm giving it away completely free. If, uh, you, if anyone wants it, please just go in the comments, put whatever contact uh, method you want me to get in contact with you, I'll pay for shipping, all that. This is probably like $150, $160, so might as well have it in your possession, right? Regardless if you have a JPC 2.0 right now or not, you can always get one in the future and not worry about something that's half the price of the armor carrier anyways. So let's get to the video. All right, I'm gonna try to make this a little faster because I don't want to make it 40 minutes long. So let's start with the JPC 1.0 I have here. Get it away. So you may be wondering why I have so many magazines on here. Five magazines, why do you need that? Well, look at it this way. If you want to go on a mission, if you want to go training, regardless of your civilian or military. Look at this. Now I have three mags. So for all the people who say, oh, why do you got six mags, 10 mags, 40 mags? The more mag pouches you have, the more magazines you could put in and take out. So onward with the video, putting these back in. So everybody knows that the JPC comes with three mag holders in the front here. Um, I don't really know how to explain it. You just stick it in. If you don't want to use it, there's Velcro. You can just Velcro it back, get rid of it. So right here, this is a high-speed gear pouch if you want to find it somewhere. It holds two magazines. You can put a tourniquet on it right here, and it has a pocket on the inside if you ever want to put anything in there. Next, going over this. This is the Onward Research uh, like bitty pouch or whatever that they put skills in or candy. Have it there just in case I want to throw something random in there. Small pouch, not really much you can do with it. If you want to put glow sticks down here, cool. Right here is some uh, Amazon knockoff mag pouches for uh, pistol mags. The uh, reason I got them is because regardless of this is made by a super high-end company like High Speed Gear or a shitty Amazon company, a mag holder is a mag holder and I doubt this would lose my mags regardless since it has a Velcro retention system. So on the armor carrier, I use the smaller 17 round mags. By the way, I only train with the Glock 19 because that's what I use on a daily basis. So why not train with it every day, be proficient. So I have these 17 round mags that go in here. This mag pouch is essentially like an emergency magazine pouch because I already have some mags on there, but these are for emergencies. It's two mags right here. I have another holder of sorts, a med like a, for medical supplies. This has a, a quick deploy, throw something in here. For example, if I want a, a drink, just put a drink inside this, like that. If I ever need it, watch this guys. Open it, and grab this. I don't know about you, but that's probably the best idea I think anyone has ever had. But I usually have medical supplies in here, not drinks. Next on the list is canteen holder. This is high speed gear as well, and it holds the uh, fabric cutting scissors right here. I'll show you all later. So where did this canteen holder come from? Issued by CIF. Uh, you guys can probably find it on a government surplus website, but I got it from CIF. Probably have to return it soon. So. Wow, I have a canteen holder. Well, when I go on runs, uh, sometimes I'll throw this on and the water source. Slip it in. Boom, canteen holder, not going nowhere else. Holds enough water for my run, I hope. So yeah, that's what that's for. I have another pouch that my buddies can access. Um, this would be really hard for me to actually access this pouch, but if my buddies want to throw something in my back, here they are. They have a tiny little pouch, they can throw whatever they want in it. It's pretty, pretty neat, pretty neat. Velcro, they want to put something stupid on me, feel free. 
This is a uh, 511 pouch, I think a shotgun shell pouch. As you can see, um, you can throw things from the top in, or you can, this is another reason I got it, is because I can easily shove my hand into something that's already open, so boom, pull something out, there you go. Next is uh, another Amazon product, shitty, only 40 bucks. Not really sure what, uh, what company it's from. It's like a map pouch. Uh, you can open it up over here. It's got holders for uh, map markers. Uh, you can put a map in here. Um, open this up, laminate stuff. More, you know, you want to put something in here. Cool, cool. Open it up. And then I also have a pouch for the inside. Or more map stuff. You want to put a, a bigger map in here that folds up. Um, cool, right? And then for here, nothing's here because I draw from the left side. So I wanted a little extra space, plus there's really not much I can add to this that I really want. So yeah, let's get on to the actual armor I'm using in here. The level four ceramic plates. Um, these are from the next day armor. Yeah, they're nothing fancy like, uh, like Hesco or anything, but at the same time, you can look up videos of it. It does literally the same thing as Hesco for half the price. It's only $250 per plate. And as the name stated, next day armor, it comes in a couple days, like two, three days, business days. So that's cool. In here, I have two level three armor plates, same brand. So with all this is probably coming out around 20, 25 pounds, depending on what I put on it. It's not too bad, especially since I'm not using this for any duty purposes, just for training to have fun. And if I were ever to actually have to put this on for combat, I wouldn't be walking much in this. Um, if I ever got into a combat situation, realistically, it'd probably just be a couple losers trying to attack my family or something, and you know, I just get you know that extra five, ten seconds to put this on, so I have it on. But yeah, let's get to my belt setup. So my belt setup is a lot more simple than my armor setup because this is what I usually wear every day, uh, and I like to be comfortable when I train. So here it is. So this belt is a T-Rex Orion belt, uh, the inner and outer. Of course, uh, Lucas from T-Rex wouldn't want to cheap out on the buckle, so this is a Cobra buckle. This is the inner right here. It's kind of a pain in the ass to put on, but uh, it is what it is. It's not a Velcro belt, but it's comfortable when it's on. On the outer, it's like any other duty belt, so that, that's that. Pretty cool, pretty cool stuff. All right, let's start with the boring stuff and get to the cool stuff. So on my right, your left, this is a uh, pretty cool little mag setup for me. Uh, just one mark mag, two pistol. I, ha I run two 20 round pistol mags or Glock mags, full loaded all times. Even when in storage, I tend to have this fully loaded with defense ammo just in case something happens. Just in case my neighbors are getting attacked, I usually have these pre-placed on a pants already. So yes, I do have just pants on the floor that these are attached to. Walk up to it, pull it up, ready to go. Um, but I'll help my neighbors, yeah, even though I don't know them. Gives me a chance to, you know, shoot people legally. Anyways, so these are uh, STAC Kiwi pouches, one AR, uh, two pistol. Pretty simple, everyone runs these, they're great. Never had an issue with them. Good retention, reliable. So yeah, next I have the high speed gear double mag pouch again with the little zippers. Same thing I have on my plate here, except this, it's on my back. So if I need to ever put anything in here, toss it in, zip it up, whatever. That being said, I can always, if I really need to, I can always just throw magazines back here. Just like that. If my battles ever need a magazine, they can just reach down there, you know, no homo, but they can. Uh, reach back there, grab the bag. Otherwise, these will be expendable mags because it's way too much of a pain to put the mags back in here. So once I use it, boom, use it. Toss it, right? I just uploaded a short about this holster not too long ago, a couple days ago, depending on whenever this video came out. So this holster is T-Rex Ragnarok holster, super thick. This thing is durable, right? And the retention is pretty good. So compared to the sidecar, probably two, 2.5 times the thickness of it. It's not gonna get crushed or break when I'm falling on my side or anything like that. I give the reasoning on why I got this instead of a Safari Lamb. Well, I like to train without the pain, you know what I'm saying? Just kidding. I got this because I'm not a police officer, so I don't need to train with that. 
and I'm also not military police, so I don't need to train with that. This is just a lot more convenient. I don't need to press buttons to uh, unlatch my weapon. So that's why I got this. This is the Safari Land quick attach system. Uh, you can easily put a new holster on. So if I do decide, if I do decide I want a Safari Land holster, guess what? Just buy a new fork, put it on the Safari Land holster. Look at this. Take, saw how easy it was to take it off. Boom, new holster on right there. Ready to go. T-Rex also sent a leg strap right here. Pretty neat. I actually like it. Keeps the weapon to my leg and not flopping everywhere. So yeah, pretty cool plus. All right, so when it comes to my pistol of choice, I'm a Glock person. Yeah, I know, everyone, oh, PSA dagger is better. You know what? You're stronger than me if you bought a PSA dagger, but I am a strong Glock person. Uh, I believe that if you were to buy a first weapon, you should buy Glock. They're really cheap. They're only like 450 for Glock 19 Gen 5 uh, MSRP at like Cabela's or something. If you buy it at a at a you know privately owned shop, not a huge franchise, it's going to be a little bit more. But you usually find them for 450. If you're a first responder, military, you'll get that 5% off. You can do the math. So on the two Glocks I do own, they're both Glock 19s. The reason being because I want to do two setups just as play with how I like it. Um, obviously this is going to be the main gun and this is going to be the backup, just a fun one. So let's talk about it. So for the people who do watch my video, I have the Aimpoint Acro P2 coming in. Uh, I'm going to be putting on this one right here. Pretty neat. Aimpoint, great choice. It was between the Trigicon RCR and the Aimpoint uh, Acro P2. Reason I got the uh, aim point is because one, it's in stock. The RCR is never in stock, and Mil Spec Mojo made a, a very, uh, very, very, very big praise on the aim point acro just recently. And you know I look up to that guy; he's a really, 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 really good shooter. So that's the reason it's coming in, coming in tomorrow. Probably short about installing it. So why do I have two Glock 19s if my holster can only fit one of them? Well, look at it like this. Let's say I have an aim point on here. And I really want to run an aim point one day, but you know, I need a tool to take this flashlight off. Well, watch this. As you see, that easy uh, to switch it. Now I can put this in the holster, just fine. And of course, if I want to switch it back, just as easy, take it out, right? Like that, good, that simple. The uppers on these two pistols are identical beside the optic, so it's not gonna be much of a change when I shooting should be hitting the same groups, everything like that. Depending on the day, this, whichever upper I use, if I just wanna go to the range, I might pack this with me just to use it. I really like this um, handle it grip, little grip texture on there. The, it's kinda of like leather, but it's really cool. Feels good, shoots great. Have uh, radiant afterburners on both of them um, because they help a lot. So why not get the little bit of help? Alrighty, now for the most painful part, putting this stuff on, let's do it. I'm gonna speed it up so it's better for you guys. All right, now that the belt's on, time to put the even more painful part on, which is the armor. Alright guys, so this is the armor get up. Pretty neat, not bad, not bad. I'll do a little spin for you guys, because I'm a, a model, you know. Just kidding, <laughs> obviously. And this is what my armor looks like when it's on, and you know, operating. Pretty good, easy to do reloads from, of course. All that good stuff. And sorry for having to flip the camera. I gotta see what I'm showing, so there you go. But yeah, let's get to the weapons I use uh, on my training.
I want a multitude of slings, only three. Um, got this one just for, for show, pretty fancy, you know, has those little cherry blossoms on it. This one I got from a gun store. It's a Texas made brand. I uh, thought it was a, you know, a two point sling, you know, where I can adjust it, but I was wrong, can't do that. And this is my favorite one right here. This is the uh, VTAC padded sling. I had this all the way when I brought my first gun. Still my favorite sling today. But yeah, I'll show you uh, it on my guns. So first I'll start with the gun I use less and then, you know, my main everyday gun that I would have to choose over my not everyday gun. All right, so this is my Daniel Defense Mark 18. Uh, this is a night vision ready gun, uh, EOTech. The uh, DE Myers Mall C1, just an SBR Mark 18. Getting a Surefire SOCOM Mini 2 coming in, uh, I don't know about soon because I still have to do the paperwork, just ordered it. I'm gonna be putting that on this one and the Spear LT. But yep, this one is pretty neat. Uh, sling manipulation in this setup is still pretty easy, although it looks like it's caught up. If I wanna be ready for shoulder transitions, all I have to do is put my gun up, just tap right here. Pull it like this, and I'll be ready to do shoulder transitions. Bang, 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 bang. Right, same, same, good deal. And then when I want to tighten my body, just grab the little piece of string right here, right here, pull it, and there you go. Tight, tight, tight. Anyways, both my guns are ambi because I'm left handed, sadly. But yep. Yeah. Bang, bang, reload. Bang, bang. Good day. Oh, yeah, this one has a vamp uh, Surefire Vampire on it, the one with the IR and white light. The next one up here is the MCX PRLT. Of course, right now, I have it in all, all its glory, stock pulled and everything. Take some pit fire shots, bang, 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 not even worried about it. Spear LT, ACOG, Tricon RMR, you know, gotta shoot like a maniac. But of course, I really only shoot with the stock extended. Boom, make this a little looser so I can shoulder it. But here's a spear. Pretty badass setup. You guys want to see most of the setup. I did add a few extra parts like the Geisley uh, Super Dynamic Enhanced Flat Trigger and uh, the Radiant Charging Handle. That's basically it. Everything else is in my other videos. This thing is a beauty. Love it so much. Reloads just as well as Mark 18. Let's get reload in. All right, let's do it. Pretty neat stuff, pretty neat stuff. This is my setup. I know, longer video sucks. But hey, free giveaway, right? Personally, I think this is the best setup for me. Uh, I love how it feels, great stuff, especially the job by itself. Sometimes wearing this is a pain in the ass, but I have ran, what, what was the longest I ran in this? I ran a mile and a half, um, a mile and a half or, or mile and three quarters with this on. Uh, again, this is 25 pounds to, to however I haven't measured it with a full kit, but I have ran a full kit. Not on a treadmill, on actual ground. Um, it does suck really bad after running that long with it, but hey, pretty cool stuff. I'm not ever planning to run that long with this thing in an actual scenario, so that's for me. But again, let me know what you guys think about this setup, about the belt, gun choices, everything and uh thank you guys for watching see you next time oh yeah i forgot to mention my medical equipment's in here the tourniquet all the bleeding control stuff uh, bandages whatever all the cool stuff